Today, let's take a look at two inflatable foil boards currently on the market. The emphasis will be on their comparison for wing foiling purposes, but these boards can also have other uses. Recently, the Wake Thief took a look at inflatable boards for pumping and for entry-level foiling behind a motorcraft. And there's a link below in the description for that video content. In this episode, we compare the Lahoma Windhawk and the Fanatic Sky Air Premium, in addition to a few compare and contrasts with a past review of the Gong Eep inflatable wing foil board, which was the board that did pave the way for this level of performance on an inflatable. I also bring in some of our local winging crew to give their take on comparing the two boards and whether owning an inflatable wing foil board could make sense for you. The boards that were compared for this episode were the 5 foot 3, approximately 100 liter Winghawk and the 5 foot 4, 104 liter Sky Air Premium. Other sizes and volumes also come in these boards, but we wanted to stay consistent in testing with this size. Both boards, they weigh the same, around a little over 15 pounds, and the Lahoma is only around four inches in depth, but it has a wider shape, whereas the Fanatic is almost an additional inch in depth, but it has a more tapered shape. Both boards have considerable nose rocker, which was one of the major upgrades from the Gong, and it leads to large performance enhancements on the water. Both boards have a carbon plate track system, which were undoubtedly piggybacked from the Gong design, but the Lahoma's track is placed anteriorly another two inches on the board, and the Fanatic is further posterior, like the EAP board. More on the potential implications of that later. The Sky Air carbon plate tapers at the front, but has an overall length that is three inches longer than the Winghawk. And to be honest, no one that I have encountered has expressed any issues of flex with any of these inflatable boards that have the carbon plate track system. The plates obviously do add additional weight to the overall setup, but they actually all are very efficient pumpers. The Winghawk, it retails for $799, and the Sky Air Premium, for $1,299. So at first glance, you may see the difference in price as just too glaring to commit to the Sky Air, but the Fanatic board is truly premium with so many bells and whistles that it will definitely elevate the inflatable board market expectations going forward. The Lahoma does come with a basic bag for day travel, a leash, pump, and repair kit, and it's neatly presented, but nothing spectacular. The Fanatic comes with a high quality bag that would suffice even for air travel, a hand pup with an adapter to interchange valves, foot straps with hardware, closed in T-nuts in M6 and M8 configurations, and a repair kit. No leash, but everything else imaginable. The overall construction appearance of the Winghawk is fair. I would say slightly less than the Gong whereas the manufacturing quality feel of the Fanatic Air is significantly higher than both. So on the surface with the items you see between the two boards, the Sky Air also has a handle on the top and bottom of the board, a removable three foot strap option, a rear silicon rail, and top and bottom seam covers. The Windhawk has a flat EVA riding surface with no foot strap options and no handle options requiring the rider to use the foil mass for transport into the water or an over-the-shoulder technique. So there is a $500 price difference between the two boards, but it doesn't take long to see why from all of the additions that the Sky Air possesses. And if you have an interest in an inflatable wing foil board, you will just have to weigh the differences against the costs in making a decision for yourself. But enough about the overview of the two boards. How do they perform on? and above the water. So for this section, I was pleased to be able to get input from a range of riders at our local spot at Lake Hefner in Oklahoma City. Everything from a beginner, not sloshing around beginner, but winging on foil beginner, just not yet hitting their transitions, to the intermediate level, such as hitting jibes consistently, but not consistently foot switching, to recreational advanced level, let's say, so foot switching, tacking, more aggressive, carving, luffing the wing, riding on your knees. Unfortunately, no wave riding, which is difficult to accomplish here. 
So now let's go over a few questions with our riders' experience on the two boards, and then I'll summarize my impressions with a comparison recap. The Lahoma and the Fanatic inflatable boards. Well, I am a little biased because I own the Lahoma board and I've put probably 50 hours or so on it. So um, to have a fair comparison, I just want to tell that right up front. So uh, I did enjoy the Fanatic. I rode it for probably 20 minutes. So um, in that short amount of time, what I uh, realized about it was it carved nice and uh, it's a little more narrow than the Lahoma. So here in the carves, it was less likely to catch the edges. Uh, first, I rode the Fanatic and I really liked it. Um, it uh, is a similar shape to my F1, which is what I'm used to. It's a little narrower than the Lahoma, which I liked. Uh, what I didn't like about it was I don't use foot straps on my F1, so the foot strap honks kind of bothered me because I moved my feet around quite a bit and I just like the flatter surface instead of having the foot strap bumps in the way. Uh, if I was jumping, I know I'd like the foot straps, but I'm not at that point right now. Um, I thought it released really well. I didn't feel like it really stuck to the water very much, uh, which was kind of a surprise because I hadn't ridden an inflatable board and I've always heard they're pretty sticky. Um, the Lahoma, the first time I rode it, I really didn't care for it. Uh, it felt like it was really sticky and I couldn't get it off the water. Uh, a friend suggested moving the foil back and shimming it a little bit. It made all the difference in the world. I went from not liking it to liking it really well. Um, my only knock on it would be that because it is wider, I can't carve the turns quite as tight as what I normally would. What I like about the Lahoma is that it's fairly easy to pump and get it up off the water. Um, I didn't find it to be really sticky, and yet it's also fairly stable. It um, floats fairly well when I'm just standing up before um, I've gotten up on foil. So um, that's probably what I like best about it. The Lahoma, I think, maybe is a little bit wider, so it's a little more forgiving that way. The other thing I don't like quite as well about it and prefer about the Lahoma is it has the bumps for, um, I guess that you can put foot straps on it, but that for me, those were sometimes in my way when I'm trying to stand on the board and especially if I try to move my feet or when I start pumping, I got off balance a time or two and, and fell because um, because of those bumps throwing me off. So I prefer the Lahoma and not to have the, to have the smooth top. Releasing. Um... Probably the uh, Fanatic release a little better because of the uh, ridge on the back that they have to sharpen the edge. But to be fair, I added one of those to mine when I saw that one on the Fanatic. So <laughs> it helped my Lahoma out. Flotation was good. It had a lot of leaderage. And so water wasn't coming over the top to really throw me off of it. It was, it was easy getting up and standing up on the board. And the nose has the curve which helps a lot, unlike the gong that I rode. What would be nice about the Fanatic is if you were wanting to use straps, you could um, add those because it has the strap inserts and the Lahoma doesn't. If you're a pure strapless person, actually the bumps for the straps are a little annoying. They can be in the way as you're trying to uh, move your feet around and get them positioned nicely. But um, on my regular board, I ride straps all the time. It's the um, small 55 liter Fanatic love it, use straps, and the lighter winds I use the Lahoma, and so not having the straps is kind of a nice thing. The touchdowns handle very well. I did a jibe, and after that jibe I touched down on the water just a little bit, and it maintained a lot of momentum to just a little bit of a push with the wing, and it came right back up immediately. Yeah, I touched down on both boards a few times. Um, Neither one seemed too sticky. I thought they both did okay coming back up. Uh, I really couldn't tell much of a difference between the two. I did like the handle in the Fanatic. It made it easier to carry. I'm used to carrying my F1 in the same way where you have a handhold and you can carry your wing in one hand and the board in the other. Uh, the Lahoma initially felt awkward but then I put it up over my shoulder and carried it, and it was fine. Like Probably that. a little more durable. They added the tape along the seams, which I thought was a really nice touch to it. So 
I think the I think the inflatable boards are a good option for the beginner. Um, I learned on a larger hardboard, and um, so the advantages to the inflatable are that it's a lot more forgiving if you fall on it, which I've fallen on my board quite a bit as I was learning to get up. I think these boards are suitable for both uh, beginners and advanced. Uh, I'm interested in the uh, inflatable for traveling purposes uh, just because they're so much more compact and easy to travel with both in the car and on an airline. Um, I like the price point of the Lahoma. It's so affordable that to me it's a no-brainer. The inflatable board is for someone who does not want to make a huge investment to get into winging. Um, boards are very expensive, so this provides an excellent alternative. It has the benefit of being portable on top of that. When I first bought it, I thought, well, you know, I might use it for traveling sometime, and, and really I thought, I'll just throw it deflated in the back of my van, and if it lightens up where I can't ride my 55 liter, I can break it out. It's roughly, you know, 100 liters or so. I could break it out and uh, use it. Well, I came to find out I spent a lot more time on it in the light winds than I thought I would because it does ride so well. So um, who would be the person that would most enjoy it is the one that's wanting to travel. And also in learning, it's nice to not have the hardness of the board on your knees to be able to do that. Long term, if you're wanting to just leave it lay around in the sun and ride it every day, an inflatable is not for you, go ahead and get a hardboard. And also you do give up a little of the release of a hardboard. Thanks to the Hefner crew for their comments. As you can see, an inflatable board can be a suitable option for all skill levels. A couple of other points that I do want to mention between these two boards are, as I said earlier, the Sky Air has a track system that is about two inches posterior to the Windhawks track system. And what this may not allow, especially with foot straps, is for your setup to be fully tuned. Look, I am a very narrow stance rider and I had my hydrofoil placed as far forward as possible in the track, but my front foot still was behind the foot strap mount. And Daniel, who has a more conventional and a wider stance, experienced the same thing when his hydrofoil was also pushed to the front of the track system. It's really not a big deal for riding unless you wanted to install the foot straps, which in my case, it just wouldn't work for strapped riding. And this posterior placement of the track system was also consistent with the Gong Eep that I owned. One point that was discussed briefly and is a very important attribute of both of these boards is with the substantial nose rocker. This is another improvement in the inflatable board market and it carries over to performance improvements with liftoff and with touchdowns. The lack of rocker in the gong just didn't excel in this area. So if you have watched this video and you just aren't sure which is the best board for you, let's go over a quick comparison of the two boards. First off, quality of build and package of accessories goes to the Sky Air. Every bell and whistle comes in this setup, plus some. With regard to releasing from the water, well, a slight edge to the Sky Air, and much of that is attributed to the Trail Silicon Ridge, which seemed kind of gimmicky at first glance, but it really does work. Now, both boards are very respectable in this category. Shape and stability is a tie because the wider shape of the Lahoma, well, it can be beneficial for beginners, but more advanced riders, they seem to like the increased carving potential of the Fanatic. Durability, well, with inflatable boards, they are held together with glue, so this is a tough one. And don't be surprised to have intermittent maintenance over time to address some issues. But the Fanatic does have seam covers on the top and bottom, which I think is a well thought out idea to attempt to increase the life of the board. Price, well, this is the largest difference between the two boards, a difference of $500. You are going to have to weigh the cosmetic and functional differences for yourself in making that decision if one of these boards fits your needs on the water. And if you have interest in purchasing either of the products shown today, well then check out Green Hat Kiteboarding. They are actually the only US dealer currently at this time able to offer both of these boards. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and likes and comments. They are always appreciated. 
That's all for today, and we'll see you next time on the OK Kite Winger. Real big damn bass. We gon' shake up this place. Say pick up, pick up that bass. Yeah, we got no time to waste. Everybody say feel.